Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our old school first person shooter, uh, retro shooter uh, vibe tutorial series that we've started here. So we've now got our player able to move around, and we can also shoot our walls, but look at our impacts are all kind of flattened out. We want them to be able to be visible to the player so they can see what's going on. Uh, and we want to be able to visualize our player shooting a gun as we're moving around our levels also. So we're going to need to create a script that will basically rotate our objects to always face the player. So the player can always see what's going on. Uh, and for this, we're going to, rather than using the bullet impact effect, which if we play the game immediately disappears, we're going to go into our art folder. I'm going to add a pickup and we're going to drop an ammo pickup into our scene because we might as well use this for our player because we're also going to want to be able to pick up more ammo as we go around in the game. So we've got our ammo pickup. I'm going to create an empty object that we'll call ammo pickup, which holds the sprite itself. So the sprite will be at zero, 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 like so. And then the ammo pickup will also be at zero, zero, zero. And then I just I'll move it over to here. Uh, and I'm going to move the sprite a little bit um, so that it's above the ground. So I'm going to move it to, say, uh, actually, no, no, we leave it where it is because I just realized the center point of it is at the center. So that's that's OK. We already set that up uh, in the package that we're using. So on the ammo pickup, we have that there. And what we're going to do is just for this ammo pickup for now, I'm going to add a circle collider 2D to it. I'm going to make that a trigger and we'll play around with that a little bit later. But for now, we're not going to create the system to do that, but to pick up the ammo. We'll do that a little bit later in this video. But what we really want to focus on is making it so that this ammo is visible to the player. Because at the moment, if I go and play, well, first of all, it's decided to appear below the ground simply because of the sort order. So I could just, if I put this to one, uh, you can see it's there on the ground, but that's not great. We want to be able to see it popping up out of the ground. So. What we're going to do is go into our scripts folder and I'm going to right click and create a new C sharp script that we'll call bill board like so. Then we'll open this up. What this billboard needs to do is access the um, the sprite render of our object here and we'll, we'll see why that is in a moment but for now we're just going to leave it we're just going to uh, set it up so that we have access to the sprite render. So I'm just going to say create private sprite renderer the SR, I think is just what we call it. And then in the start function, we'll just say the SR equals get components sprite renderer. Okay. And this is actually pretty simple what we want this to do there's only one line of code that we need to add in here and in our update loop simply all we have to say is transform dot look at and what we want to look at is the player now how are we going to know what the player is we could do a search so we could search for hey what object has the player controller script attached to it and then get the transform permission transform position based on that but that's going to be resource intensive obviously we wouldn't want to do that in the update loop the whole time but we'd have to do it for every object that needs to look at the player so that's not really great so instead what we're going to do is make it so that every object can instantly gain access to the player controller script and how we do that is by going to the player controller and at the very top we're going to make a very a reference variable up here called public static player controller and we're going to call this instance and what a static uh, object is it basically means that this is an object this reference here that we're creating is something that is true for any version of the player controller script so every single version if you had multiple player controllers in the world if whatever we assign to be instance here will be the same on all of those scripts. And this is really handy because what we can do is down here, we can 
use the awake function and in here we can say instance equals this so what that means is if we go back to our player here as soon as the game starts running it'll do a check and say okay I've got the player controller script so in here I'm gonna say the instance for all player controller scripts will be equal to this and this means this particular one is running right now so if we had say if we had two player controller scripts in, in our scene the first one would go okay well I'm gonna set to be the instance to be my version and then if there was another one down here he would say okay well now I'm gonna set the instance to be my version so it would only be the second one would have the instance variable set for all player controllers basically but what this also means is if we're only using one player which we're only gonna have one player in our game if we're only using one player what that means is when this is set if I just save this if we go back to billboard what we can type in here is player controller script access the instance that has been set so the instance has been set to be our player controller we have in the world and then we can say just get the transform dot position of that player so now we're always able to easily access that without having to search for the player controller uh, within our scene which is quite resource intensive and that's something you want to be doing a lot and then all we do is say hey we want to look at the player controller and we need to use uh, you can see here we need a world up value and the world up value we need to use is minus vector tree dot forward uh, you might be wondering why we use that well that's basically the one that works uh, you can you, you can try out different ones if you want to you'll get different effects going on but minus vector tree dot forward is what works perfectly for us and then we can go back in here and once that's compiled uh, let's go back to our ammo we're going to add the billboard script in here and now if I press play you can see boom our little ammo pops up so now we can see the ammo and as we move around our little object always is facing us so this is kind of like the old school style of hey you can see a nice flat object and it always looks visible to the player but you might notice hey this says Oma what happened to our ammo why is it backwards our little box is completely wrong uh, and that's simply because of the way we're rotating things it will always make the uh, sprite itself appear backwards so we don't want that happening and the way to fix that is on the sprite renderer component that we have access to up here basically as soon as we start just tell us to flip the x-axis so flip x equals true We'll save this and if we go back in here you can see uh, even before I run on the ammo here if we look at it over here if I flip X that just flips that back and forward now what we could do is you could manually every time you create an object you could go here and turn that to be true but that's awkward instead it's e much easier to just do it through a script and we can now press play and there we go our ammo is always facing the correct way okay so that's great that works the way we want so let's apply the same thing to our uh, bullet impact effect so let's go to our prefabs on bullet impact here uh, because we know this doesn't have a child object with sprite it's right here the sprite render is so we can just go to add component billboard like so and now when I press play if we fire a shot boom we get our impact on the wall just the way we want it to okay well I'm out of bullets now so that's no good but it's working exactly the way we want so we now have our impacts happening we have our ammo counting down as we go next thing we need to do is actually have a have a visible thing on our screen for us to see as we go so let's make it so that we can see a gun on the screen now you might think oh, okay well we'll add a sprite as the child of the player to show our gun as we move around but actually what we'll do is put the gun on a completely different area which is going to be on the UI overlay of our game so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna right click and create a UI canvas like so and I'm gonna rename this to be UI canvas and then here I'm gonna right click and add a image 
you can see this creates this white block box here so if I double click on this we'll zoom out so we can see there's our little image inside our screen here and then what I'm going to do is this image I'm going to go into over where we have art and we have UI we've got this little shotgun uh, representation so I'm gonna click this shotgun object drag it into source image there we're gonna set native size make sure we preserve the aspect and we're gonna click and drag this down to the bottom of the screen like so so now we've got if we press play we've got a gun on the screen all of a sudden and suddenly it actually feels much much better so we can shoot and we've got a little bit of action going on but we don't want it to just shoot and have nothing else happening let's add a very simple animation to make sure our shots um, look like they're firing out of this gun rather than just this kind of emptiness here so we're going to go to animation here and we're going to create a new animation so we're going to go back to our animations folder and we're going to this is going to be ui gun so we want to have an idle animation for when we're not shooting so ui gun idle and we're going to have another one for ui gun shoot so let's set up this animation first of all so the idle one is simply going to be this default frame so i'm just going to click and drag that in here and we'll just put it at five as well so that this is constantly doing this uh, let's actually just drag it out just to do that obviously nothing's happening we're not seeing anything different here it's not changing that's perfectly fine on our gun one though we're going to just drag this little one into the frame here then switch to this here and we'll just drag this out a little bit it doesn't really matter how long this is now if you press play you can see bang 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 we're getting this nice gunshot effect we could make this last for a few frames less if we wanted to uh, I actually think the five uh, frames out of 60 works nicely for us so that's fine we then need to set up our animator to control this so I'm going to switch to my animator tab again if you don't have this open go to window animation and animator and here we've got our UI gun idle and UI gun shoot now what we want to happen is obviously idle is going to be our default position which is what it is because we created it first and then we're going to create a transition from any state so I'm going to right click and transition to gun shoot and we went, when do we want this to happen basically whenever we set a value to say hey we're shooting so we can do that by going to parameters up here hitting the little plus symbol and going to trigger and we'll just say shoot so whenever we tell it the shoot trigger should be true then it, we're going to activate our gun shoot and how we set that up is by clicking on our little arrow we created so we right clicked on here and then clicked on gun shoot I'll just delete it and do it again so we right click make transition and then move over to here and click again and then when we click on the middle thing the actual arrow itself we can go over here and say we don't have a fixed duration and we don't have a transition duration because we want it to happen instantly as soon as this is true and the conditions down here will be that shoot is true so when shoot is triggered it'll immediately go to this animation and then we can say make another transition back to idle when our gun shoot is complete so how we can go for that is say here we have an exit time that's exactly what we want to happen we don't want a transition duration at all and we don't want a fixed duration but we want an exit time of 0.5 say so that'll be 0.5 of the length of our gun shoot animation which will be basically at about this point here it'll go okay exit out to the normal gun idle animation so we need to be able to see that in action of course at the moment we don't have that doing anything so we need a way to be able to access this animation so for that what we're going to do is create a reference to this in our player controller script so let's go back to our player we'll open our player controller and then up here we're going to create a public animator gun anim and then down here when we take away our current ammo we're also going to say gun anim dot set trigger set trigger there we go and we want to set the shoot trigger that we just created like so and we'll save this 
and then when we go back in we need to make sure we put that animator into this slot so we have our gun anim so we're we know that's on our image down here which has the animator component so we're going to drag the image here i'm going to change the name of this to be our let's call this hood gun go back to our scene view oh, that doesn't matter so now if i press play and now when we shoot boom we get this nice little gun effect happening in our little world so perfect now we were able to have our shots looking a bit more as realistic but before we go any further let's make it so that we can actually pick up this ammo uh, and then we're pretty much done with the basics of our ammo and shooting system so we can go into our scripts folder i'm going to create a new c sharp script that we'll call ammo pickup we'll open this up it's a nice and simple script this is going to be uh, let's say we need to say how much is this ammo going to be worth so public int no not c int hold on public int ammo amount we'll call it and we're going to set that to be 25 by default and now all we're going to do is check and see if the player enters the trigger area of this ammo so uh, void on trigger enter 2d select that I'm going to change this from being collision to be other because I think that's a much better name and uh, much more sensible and then we're going to say if the other dot tag equals player now what's this this is the most simple way to be able to identify what other objects ran into our area so if we go back into unity on our player over here uh, you'll see there's a slot here for tag so what we want to do is say when our ammo if i just double click on this to zoom back in when our player enters this circle area it, when any object enters the circle area basically it'll do a check and see hey the object that entered in here does it have the tag player so on our player what we want to do is set the tag here to the default player tag is the default one set up for us so i can just click on that and now it'll say okay did the player enter this area oh it did well then we want to tell the player controller which stores how much current ammo the player has we want to tell that hey player controller we can al already access the specific player controller in our game that we have because we have player controller dot instance then we're going to say hey player controller your current ammo we're going to add on so plus equals the ammo amount that our little pickup is worth and then we're going to destroy this game object so we're destroying the game object because obviously we don't want the player to be able to keep picking up the ammo forever okay so we'll save that we'll go back in here and now on our ammo pickup we'll add that script there like that and now when i hit play uh, actually we'll make sure that we have the player selected so we can see our current ammo which is 10 at the moment I just fired a shot so now it's nine if I run over and collect this there we go we picked up some ammo and now we have more shots that we can use now obviously we in a, a later episode we'll set it up so we can see how much ammo we have uh, but for the moment we're able to now shoot we're able to show an effect happening when our player shoots and we're able to look around all over the place move around and we're able to most importantly not run through these walls and there you go so we now got the some most of the basics of our system in place the next thing we need to do is start giving ourselves some real things to shoot at and also be able to set up a level for our player to run around in thanks for watching i'll be back soon with more game tutorial goodness